Getting better doesn't mean you won't fail. Sure, you might get an F on a test, stumble on a few notes on the instrument you're learning, but the important thing is that you don't let it be your end all. You don't make those mistakes or the low points of your practice conclude your journey. For the past couple videos, I talked about failing and getting back into learning the basics. All in all, by not giving up, I was able to make a comeback and produce this illustration you see on screen. This piece marked a breakthrough in terms of my control on especially color and values. So how did I get here? Honestly, the topic of how I got better at drawing is really broad and it's hard to cover everything. But I will give you guys the five core values I used that made me a better artist. Number one, you gotta know your dream. Just like dreams, where we want to go with our art can be vague and unclear. Sometimes in order to drive our interest towards drawing, we kind of need to have a more solid and detailed vision of where we want to go. and. This is one of the top things that kept me pushing past my horrible drawings. It's because I had a clear and detailed goal. I had clear and detailed goals of where I wanted to be and where I wanted to go and the process in which I wanted to go. So more on that later. Find artists that you admire and inspire you. Create a mood board of all your favorite artwork or things. These give you a visual idea of where you want to go with your art. Sometimes you have to visualize in order to make your goals clear to yourself. For instance, personally, some of my art goals in the past, I was really into reading webtoons and thought I would go on the webtoon artist path. I was heavily into action, romance, adventure, fantasy, historical romance, those kind of things. And prior to that, I was heavily into manga and anime. So those contributed to my vision for the future and where I wanted to go. But my dream to become a webtoon artist did not particularly make me better at drawing. It was only after I started collecting artwork on Pinterest, for example, of these artists behind webtoons I loved, such as Unholy Blood, Solo Leveling, Legend of the Northern Blade. Seeing for myself an just stopping and pausing to take a look at these screenshots of my favorite webtoons and collecting them gave me a very a clear understanding of the line work I loved, for instance, or the shape language, or the color, or the design of the characters or their environments. I highly suggest that you take some time to visualize to collect from your favorite artists on Instagram or Pinterest or any medium and just put them all together. I think that is the f one of the first steps as to making you, you start to excel in your drawing. Having that clear understanding of where you want to go. And following that, a little bit related to visualizing and knowing your dream, you gotta have a plan that excites you. And it shouldn't just excite you, but it should contain specific goals and practical steps. For example, when you look at the mood board of all your favorite art, you can start to think, how do I get there to where they are? Or if you don't have any particular sources of visual inspiration from artists, is there an artist position 
in the game or film industry that you want to attain? Do you want your art to be published in some kind of form? By the time you are 30, by the time you are 40, where do you want to see your art at? Where you want to be should excite you and that excitement will motivate you to power through the more mundane, practical and daily practices you do to make better drawings. Personally, take what I'm gonna say proceeding this with a grain of salt because I don't know if my plans will change but now one of my biggest dreams is to become a freelance illustrator and produce a series of graphic novels or something of the like in the future. I would also love to open up my own shop and create my own products. Just the thought of doing something I love and also seeing that I can make a living out of it excites me and really drives me to look at the bigger picture in spite of the more boring practices I might do in my daily routine. Maybe I'm currently just drawing the anatomy of the arm or the torso or the legs, for example, or studying heads or studying color or value or composition. All those fundamental things that help me get technically better at drawing but just focusing on those little practices, you can easily lose motivation. So you gotta have an exciting plan in the back of your brain rooting for you. The third core value, which I think is also important, is learning the fundamentals. If you guys don't know the art fundamentals, according to CG Spectrum, this, there are six fundamentals of art. Anatomy, perspective, form and structure, lighting and shadow, color and composition. I know it, it probably sounds a little boring to practice the fundamentals and even I kind of find it tedious. Let me be honest with you, there was a time where I neglected the fundamentals and just did illustrated works for myself. Looking back at those pieces, my drawings didn't really improve. Although I did not I do not fully regret those drawings, my drawings it would make me so disappointed at myself because I know I can do better but I have no idea why I'm not doing better if you know what I mean. And the fundamentals are there to solve that. It makes you understand why your pieces don't work as well as it could have. It helps you identify specific elements of your piece that you can improve and better your drawings. I don't believe that fundamentals are everything to a better drawing. You can be technically sound, but if you lack your voice in your drawings, your piece might not necessarily be good. But fundamentals have played such a huge part in my own development that I can't not put it in this list because it was such an important factor to my improvement. Now, I will probably list a list of the main resources that I've used in the description below or in the video. I have to warn you though that the fundamentals, it's like you're discovering a whole new world. It's like you're discovering the tip of an iceberg but then you only find out that it's only the tip of the iceberg and there's just so much you can dig into and discover. And that is why I want to stress again that you have to have specific goals and specific dreams because those tell you what quality of art you're aiming for and how to make your art better but not overdo it because fundamentals can be overwhelming but it will stop being as overwhelming if you know when to stop for each fundamental. Number four, I find that actively observing the real world, the environments around you in real life, gives you a more deeper understanding 
of how to better your drawings and I absolutely forgot to <laughs> to talk about the painting I have on screen which is my bad. Let me start talking about it. In my mind this drawing is kind of me testing the waters. I also wanted to see how how much I've, have I pr improved after studying the fundamentals and just using all of my knowledge as I possibly can into creating this piece to really visualize where I currently am right now in my art journey. So my future goals empowered me to power through this drawing. I did a lot of planning, specific planning for this particular drawing as well. I've gone through a few iterations on how the composition and values would contribute to this piece. So you might see like a little value thumbnail on the side on the left in this video. What really started to stump me was basically the color and how I should render this piece. So my fourth tip actively observing the real world helped me power through my struggle through those areas for this illustration. For example, as you might see later or now, you can see that my colors probably look very desaturated and dull. The colors overall look pretty lifeless and not saying that this process is bad because I think I've heard from another artist somewhere that it's better if you start with desaturated colors and build up, but take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> so the sky behind the guy in this picture kind of was throwing me off and I didn't really know how to make it more lively and interesting, but I was just casually like taking a rest for my eyes and I highly suggest that when you're doing digital drawing to always take a break when you can. So I was looking up and I noticed the interesting combination of more desaturated grays and saturated hues that combine into a really appealing look and mood. So and it's like if I could try to describe my experience to you guys, it's somewhat likened to how you see a tiger on YouTube and you you know what it looks like and you're like, yeah, it's, it's a tiger, it looks kind of, um, it looks cool, it's probably bulky and muscly kind of animal. Eh, it's an animal. But when you go to a zoo and you see it in real life, there is a difference. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it, it turns to, uh, it's an animal, just an animal on screen, to, oh my goodness, it's an animal. <laughs> it's a tiger. So that's how I kind of felt. You absorb information better when you encounter it in the real world. If I only looked at sky pictures in, on Pinterest, I wouldn't have the same feeling and understanding that I did when I just looked up out the window. So go and touch some grass, people. It really helps. The second to last point is make drawing a habit and I think this is explanatory in and of itself. You can compare it to a pianist who only practices once a week to a pianist who practices every day. There is just a faster buildup in quality when you do it consistently and not to say that you should do it every day because I think breaks are important and having rest is important but keeping that consistency I think accelerates how fast your drawings can improve because you're not giving up and you're being persistent and when you make it a habit it goes beyond your emotions it goes beyond like oh i i'll just skip doing art today i just i don't feel like it like let's go watch yeah and as opposed to oh what is my hand doing it's drawing you're not even thinking about it but you're just making a beeline for the sketchbook 
or your drawing tablet. If you can make your mind and body just autopilot, it just makes your improvement easier and less based on how you feel at the moment. Because drawing became so natural to you. Uh, before I say the last point, let me talk more about <laughs> my illustration. This illustration actually was part of a Discord event. I'm part of an art community and for Christmas, the group decided to hold an event where other artists would draw for another artist. It's basically a gift exchange, but the receiver doesn't know who the gifter is. Each artist was supposed to give some ideas about what they want to be drawn and whatever shenanigans would happen, I got a really vague picture of a little white guy. Wow, that sounds a little controversial, but what I mean is like it's a white colored being. <laughs> I don't know, I'll, I'll probably put it on screen right now. That was what the other person wanted me to draw, essentially. So I was a little, st a little stumped. I didn't know at the time if it was a meme or... I don't know what this, this creature was supposed to in imply. So I just took my liberties and created this drawing on screen. It was fun drawing this because the prompt if I should say, gave me a lot of open room to <laughs> do what I wanted, but just keep the color, which is white. And I, and actually, I love the color white. It's one of my top hues that I love to draw or have in my pieces. So I was thinking, okay, at first I was going to draw, what's his face? Goju from Juji. I'm gonna butcher this. Uh, what's his face? Go something. Go Ju. Gojo. Gojo Satoru. Oh, I probably butchered the name <laughs> from Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen. And I know that he's a popular dude. I never watched the anime, like all the episodes, but I was going to draw him for this guy because of their resemblance of having the color white. But then it kind of felt really odd for me to draw fan art of, of an anime that I wasn't into. So I was just thinking, okay, what will, what vision for this prompt can I have that will drive me to finish a really good illustrated piece for this other artist to enjoy? Uh, I don't know if this of the the artist that received this enjoyed it because <laughs> it ended up being up my alley but i don't know if it's up that person other person's alley <laughs> but i decided to just draw my inspiration from the webtoons i would read and unfortunately i've been reading relatively more historical romance webtoons <laughs> And I just thought of that one generic character that would always seem to be the second male lead in those t kinds of stories. And that's basically the f one of the foundations for this piece. I wanted to draw that generic character. You know, you know how if you're ever an avid reader of those webtoons, you might see a general reoccurrence of a random not so random white long-haired guy that is like nice to the main female lead but has a lot of secrets the main female lead would always fall for the black haired no emotions kind of dude so when i think about it i basically always find it a bit of a pity that the long-haired white haired dude would not be the main male lead and it always has to be the emotionless brooding dude that's somewhat cruel to the female character those characters get chosen but the ones that i like the ones i'm drawing on screen might not 
get the spotlight. So as you can probably tell, I have a lot more motivation and interest in this topic. So I went ahead and drew it. <laughs> Maybe kind of exposing my my inward tiny simp for long-haired dudes. Essentially, all of the characteristics that you might find generic in that generic second male lead person or even villain, I kind of want to convey in this illustration. He of course has royal blood or noble blood in his ancestry. I particularly thought he was part of the royal family in this case and his father, the king, had more than one wife and unfortunately his mother died when he was young and that purpley pink pendant you see around his neck is basically his the heirloom left behind by his mother. Originally, I thought that I could make the scene behind him reflect his state of mind. I don't think I conveyed it well enough, unfortunately. I thought I could make the castle reflect in the water and then in that reflection there, the sword on this character would also be reflected and cast a bloody hue over the, the castle reflection and which insinuates his murderous intent over the royal family. I also wanted the viewers to be like, to look at it and be like, oh, this is pretty and pretty calm too. But then if they take a second look, they would look at the black sword, look at his black eyes and I guess evil smile and be like, hold up, there is something going on. There is something wrong. I Again, I don't think I got that across too much, but hopefully some viewers get it. Like the feeling I wanted to give. It's like he is wearing a mask with and trying to hide his evil intentions. That's what I wanted to also communicate to the audience. Anyway, enough about this painting. The very last point I wanted to make is always be flexible with failure. And this is such a big thing to me in my own art journey and how I got better at drawing because it's kind of inevitable to make bad drawings, to make drawings that you don't like or don't meet your expectations. And my past videos kind of reveal that to you guys. You will make stumbles along the way, you will disappoint yourself, and sometimes you might feel like, bruh, am I even an artist? But the important thing is you can't let those failures stop you. And that's why having a clear vision for yourself is so important because it's like getting an F on a test for a particular course. But then you keep going because you want, you really want to get that bachelor's degree by the end of one year or two years. Even if you make a mistake or have a piece that you can't post online to feel proud of yourself, for instance. Also, even your dreams can fail, even your vision can fail. And it honestly failed for me. I failed at meeting my aspirations to become a webtoon artist and start publishing a series that kind of slowed down my overall drawing progress because I was discouraged that my dream did not condense into reality the way I wanted it to. But that's why I wanted to really emphasize that you gotta be flexible when your piece or vision doesn't go well. Take that chance to reevaluate your goals and take that chance not to beat yourself up, but gather what you learned from that failure to push you into bigger or better pieces of work or dreams. Of course, having your dreams crushed, it is a big blow, but it is a chance for you to get to know yourself better and knowing yourself better helps you to create a better vision for yourself. After knowing that I love to do detail and just grind on a single point, for lack of a better word, 
um, I started to deviate towards doing more illustrations. Hopefully you can see my attention to detail in this piece. I definitely feel like I overdid it in terms of how I placed those details. So I probably would try to improve that in the future. But knowing myself now, I instead of becoming a webtoon artist, even though I want to do something like that in the future, the more attainable vision I have is to become an illustrator. So, so don't give up, especially if you know you can do better. So these are all the five core values I've applied for myself that got me better at drawing. I know these are more uh, general, but I think they are almost essential, at least for me personally. So take it as you wish. I hope it helps you create a better understanding of how to get better at drawing. So thank you guys for watching. At the very end of this video, you will see my points again so it's easier to visualize. Happy painting everyone and until next time, bye bye